Well, welcome to Tea and Talk, everyone. My name is Leslie Thompson. I am Director of Adult Programs at the Sid Richardson Museum. Um, and before we get going, I want to start with how I begin all of our adult programs um, at the Sid, which is with uh, a land acknowledgement. And for those who aren't familiar with a land acknowledgement, um, it pays tribute to the original inhabitants of the land that we are on. So we, the Sid Richardson Museum, respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who have lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid would especially like to acknowledge and pay respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. So today, in addition to members from the Sid Richardson Museum staff, we have a special guest with us today. So I'm going to um, go around our, our virtual table here um, and go in order of my screen and introduce each person. So when I say your name, just give a, a quick wave. Um, so above me, I've got Mary Burke, who is our former director of the Sid Richardson Museum. She has returned for a virtual tea and talk today. Um, below me, I've got Shelby Orr, who's Director of School and Family Programs. Then I've got Renee Green, who is our Admin Assistant at the SID. Then we've got Scott Winterroad, who is our current Director of the Sid Richardson Museum. And then we've got Betsy Thomas, who are, is our Director of Education Resources at the SID. So thank you everyone for being here today. Um, so to quickly review for those who are not familiar with Tea and Talk, this is a program that we host at the museum. And it's an opportunity to slow down the art viewing process. Um, I like to think of it as a, a visual deep dive into one work of art through a conversation of shared observations. Um, often when one visits an art museum, they spend on average maybe 10 to 12 seconds with one work of art, and that's just not a lot of time to take in all of the details and nuances that um, each artwork has to offer. Now, normally our program allots for about a half an hour, um, but for the sake of the virtual experience, we're gonna keep it down to 10 minutes. Um, but you'll quickly see that the even 10 minutes is not enough time to take in everything um, that this painting has. Now I have on the screen with us um, a digital reproduction of a painting from our collection, um, but I wanna remind everyone while it is fantastic that we have technology that allows us to see artwork um, digitally, um, it is obviously not as good as seeing the real painting in person. Um, so I encourage you, when you have the chance to visit art museums, um, to go look at art uh, in person because there are so many details, um, colors, so many things that you miss um, when you're looking at a digital screen. But for the sake of today's <laughs> program, we're going to be looking at digital reproduction. Um, and I'm going to refrain from sharing the artist title and date until the end of our conversation so as not to influence our looking in any way. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this painting. I'm going to set my timer um, for 10 minutes. But yeah, as you're looking at this painting, share something that you notice. I'm immediately drawn to the white horse that's just a little left of center. Mm. um just the the twisting of its body and the facial expression and the red handprint um just a lot of movement going on yeah so your eye is immediately drawn when you look at this painting to that that central horse that white horse in the middle with all the movement going on and the details of the red hand what else do you notice i'm also drawn to the white area below the white horse um that patch of snow um, the white and the brilliant blue underneath. Yeah, so your eye kind of goes down below the white horse to more white um, and then seeing those details. Yeah, seeing those blue shadows, I, mm -hmm. man, those shadows are really beautiful. What else do you notice? Looking at the blue shadows and that, that white there underneath the, the group of horses and the bison, and then on to the foreground, there's another patch of that blue and white, and then that mirrors in the background to the mountains mm -hmm. and the snow in the distance. So there's this really kind of beautiful um, uh, pairing between the two areas of the canvas that ca catches my attention because of that brilliant blue and white. Yeah, so we're noticing kind of this repetition of this pairing of color of the blue and white, both in the foreground and in the background, which really kind of makes it cohesive. What else do you notice? 
Um, I'm picking up like a thunderous sound. Ooh. Yeah. Um, you what know, you say that? Well, you see it's a long trail of bison. Um, and obviously there's, it's a lot of commotion and a lot of fast movement. And so they're, I'm just imagining how many hooves are on the ground right now. Um, so yeah, they're having to act quickly in a, in a very, uh, within lots of commotion. And a very distinct sound suit too, because it's, there's snow, so it's like kind of padded, but still loud. It'd be a very interesting sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't have experience hearing that, but from, <laughs> right, from not you know, literature and movies, that's, I guess, my connection. Yeah. And it looks like they're maybe kicking up dust. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. makes them look like they're moving pretty quickly. That's a good point. Yeah, we're seeing that dust um, in the background, which also um, points to movement. Because I'm such an animal lover, <laughs> I'm drawn to what's actually happening um, in the painting. And to me, I, I kind of see two things that's going on. The, the, the horse, obviously, is not, the white horse is not in a good position. Um, there's a horn that's possibly, you know, goring the horse. Um, and then at the same time, the, I noticed the calf uh, behind the the bison, um, and yeah, I wonder, you know, is that is that its mom? Is that <laughs> so? There's like this sort of tragedy drama thing unfolding there, you know, within the within what's going on. So I'm kind of drawn to to the to that side of it. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're focusing on this. What 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 could be the story in the central foreground here? with the horse and the bison kind of uh, ramming into the horse. And then we see the calf in the background, which maybe lead us to wonder, you know, maybe is this the cause of why the bison is going into the horse? Yeah, there's a lot of speculation about the sequence of that narrative. Yeah. Not that the, not that the gentleman riding the, uh, the, the white horse is gonna, you know, be hurt in any way. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There also seems to be a lot of detail when looking at the horse and the rider and the adjacent rider, mm -hmm. the um, decorative elements of the two men, their hair and the ornamentation. Mm, yeah, it's on their bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're noticing when you look at the two writers in the foreground, all of the details that the artist has brought in, um, both on the horses, but the, the writers themselves too, you can see um, on their faces, their hair, um, even some of the clothing that they have on. You can see like in that the figure that's on the white horse that I'm not sure what item that might be, but some kind of sash. Um, you can almost see pattern in that fabric itself too. It's like a green and maybe a blue, um, very specific kind of pattern, yeah. I'm drawn to the legs of the horses and the bison and that beautiful um, negative space that's created throughout underneath the grouping in the front. And then it's, it's also, it creates this kind of interesting shape overall uh, between their legs and then that foreground um, area, um, that patch of snow we were looking at earlier, there's something really dynamic. There's a lot of movement happening in that one small space and it's activated even more by that, um, that kind of ramble looking um, twigs that we see that, that zigzag line that's there yeah, in the yeah. middle. There's something really dynamic about that space. Yeah, so we're noticing even though there, you know there's there, there's action going on everywhere. So not only above on top with the the riders and the the horses and bison, but then below them too with all of their legs and placement of each. It's like quite a puzzle, <laughs> like a pretzel. Yeah. Something I don't think I ever noticed before, and and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Um, because the bison in the in the front in the foreground of the painting is coming more our direction, um, it looks like the rest of the herd, are they, they're going in the opposite direction. Um, mm. And I've never really thought about that or noticed that before. 
Well, that's so. something you brought up with the, um, you know, with the young bison mm -hmm. here. So everybody's running or all the bison are running this way. And all of the men on horses seem to be hurting the bison. And it mm -hmm. seems like something, there's been a turn of events here where right. he's no longer hurting the bison. The bison's kind of hurting him. Hurting, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and is that um, is that blood uh, coming from the nose of the bison? It, it's again great reason why to go see these in person. It's a little hard to tell. Yeah. Um, that am I correct in that? There does look to be something either if it's not like saliva, perhaps it could be blood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's kind of a mixture. Yeah. And it yeah. could be it could be like still coming from the horse but kind of somehow mm. got swept Has it's born. not from the bison mm. there's something red yeah and then i don't know i have an unfair advantage there's something hidden in the foreground that <laughs> that i forgot about when this was first put up and i yeah. don't know if you want the viewers at home to find it or if you want me to say it out loud well, you go ahead and share it. <laughs> it's our little secret treasure that we like to. Yes, if we want to make it more interactive. Um, this little rabbit or bunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right at the bottom. I always forget that that's there. <laughs> nice little surprise. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. little bit of sweetness and a really, really difficult conflict. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I'm noticing with this painting, um, you know, there are touches of like really bright color, mostly on the riders with that red and the green um, of their clothing. And then the, of course the red um, hand on the horse. But within the foreground landscape itself, you can see like even in, in that little bramble that Scott was pointing out below the white horse. And then it sprinkled in a little bit um, is that like sage color? It's like this light teal green almost. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'm not familiar I'm, with this kind of landscape, if that's something that you would see all year round, or if maybe that's hints of spring coming to the fore, because you kind of have some bare patches um, between the snow. So I don't know if that kind of gives us a hint as to time of year, are we transitioning into spring or not? But I always, I always like seeing that little little touch of green in what kind of, at first glance can feel like kind of, um, well, at least for me, it feels like a very monotone kind of painting for the most part, you know, a lot of browns and tans, and then you've got the blues, but those little touches of that sage, um, I just really love that, the pastel. Mm -hmm. What else do you notice? As to time of year, um, since I, did, I haven't thought about that, but with the snow on the ground and they're not heavily dressed, uh, any mm. of indigenous people in the painting, um, you know, that's, so that's a good, that's also a good, uh, maybe a good indicator that, it, you know, mm. is warmer than when we think about the snow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I imagine that, you know, when you're exercising and like, uh really crisp almost spring winter mm -hmm. i can kind of feel you can feel the air uh, almost dry that's what it looks mm -hmm. like to me mm -hmm. yeah well i hate to interrupt the conversation but we've reached our 10 minutes <laughs> oh, no. um i feel like we could go on for another 10 minutes but um i'm gonna kind of cap it there for now um and i'll go ahead and share the artist title and date um with this painting that we're looking at so this is a painting by Charles Russell, which you might have noticed his signature there on the bottom left um, with his, um, his brand there, his, his bison skull. Um, and this is a painting called Wounded, um, or also an alternate title is The Wounded Buffalo, and this is from 1909. Um, so the, the title kind of helps give us a little more information, um, but we obviously kind of started putting together a narrative just by, by looking at this on our own. Um, now, while we are ending the conversation here, um, we would love to continue the conversation virtually um, for those of you who are watching. So um, if you have any other thoughts or observations that you um, see in this painting and want to share, please 
leave your comments below um, and share with us what you notice in this work of art. Um, but otherwise, thank you all for joining us for Team Talk. It was good to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>